What is going on YouTube? We're back with another video on the Mustang Mach-E and today specifically I want to talk about the climate controls and the heat setting and how exactly does this work in a Minnesota winter. As you can see uh, probably right here 24 degrees Fahrenheit today so it's quite warm for being uh, at the uh, towards the end of December here we're just a couple days before Christmas it's unseasonably warm here we've had several days already that have been well below zero and so I've had a chance to have this out in some really cold temperatures I'm going to talk about um, sort of some tips that I've learned and some things to consider for winter driving with the heat um, also, I'm going to do a second part to this. We're actually going to do it when it is super cold out. I'm not going to preheat the vehicle. We're going to see how long it takes to warm up. So this will be a multi-part series. But today I just want to go over some basics of the heating system. So um, when you hop in, uh, as you can see here, we've got the... This is kind of just what the climate control system looks like. So generally speaking, uh, I like to have it on, you know, the defrost and the heat, or I'm sorry, the floor heat. It seems to circulate the air the best. For the uh, automatic temp control, that actually works pretty good. I usually like to have it around 71, and then I use the auto setting quite a bit. And I usually have it, there you can see it's on full speed auto, which if you listen, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's probably the equivalent to like the number four setting on the speed control. So if I want to do manual speed, I can just do this and have it. So that's number four. Uh, so maybe even number three. That's probably what it's like when you have it on that auto on the fastest setting. So if you really want it to get warm in here, uh, like in a hurry, what you'd have to do is just go ahead and max that out. I'm sure you can hear that now. This thing's moving quite a bit of air. Now still, I have it set at 71, so it's just going to be moving a lot of air really fast, but it's going to still be keeping the temp at 71. And of course, I could go up or down from there, but I actually had to have this, uh, actually I had it on about number six. I was about 10 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And uh, boy, in order to keep the air moving around, you just had to, I had to crank that up quite a bit. So let me turn this down so I can talk and that's not super annoying. Um, so this particular vehicle has a 5kW or a 5,000 watt PTC heater. So when you think of an electric heater, you know, you think, boy, I push a button and it's instantly warm. Well, that's not necessarily the case here. What happens is that 5kW heater does get warm fairly quick, but it still has a closed loop system. So it's pumping coolant through essentially like that heater, which then goes through a heater core, uh, much like a traditional vehicle. And then that warm air, you know, blows across that heater core and then ultimately into your vehicle. And then that loop system uh, just keeps going as it needs. So the nice thing is, yes, that PTC module can heat up pretty much instantly, uh, but it, it does take a second for the heater core and for the fluid itself to warm up. So it's not like you hop into this thing and bam, it's instantly blowing out, you know, blazing hot air. Uh, no, it's not like that. Uh, but it still does heat up fairly quick. Probably the biggest piece of advice I can get is in your Ford app, make sure that you use, uh, you know, when you go to start the vehicle, let me see if I can pull it up here. Sorry, I got the little bit of the sniffles. Okay, so here's my phone and you can see that start button there. This is the Ford Pass app. So press and hold that start button. It takes now oh, maybe 10 to 12 seconds or so. It'll tell you up here that it's started. So it'll run for 15 minutes. What I found is that 15 minutes is pretty good. It's usually ample time if it's above zero. But those few days that we've had where it's below zero, there's a button over here where you can extend it for 15 minutes. I would recommend doing that, you know, give it another five minutes, like 20 minutes or something seemed to be ideal. Here's the big caveat though, make sure that the vehicle is plugged in. Here's the idea behind plugging the vehicle in and using the starter. It makes a lot more sense for the vehicle to be pulling that power from the wall instead of trying to take it from your battery bank because the heating system the hvac system no matter if it's heat or air conditioning that's going to be one of your bigger current draws um, overall so anything you can do to help your system out is going to be huge so especially if you're parked outside leave it plugged in and use that start feature let it run let the climate control uh, try to get caught up a bit here's another 
huge help. These seat heaters, so I keep mine just on the number one setting. It can go, you know, you can go up from there. That number three is like nuclear. It is hot. I just, I can't deal with it. It's, my wife loves it, but I keep it at number one. Here's the idea though, behind the seat heater and then the steering wheel heater is awesome. That actually, it's perfect. It's only one setting. You only get, it's either on or off. It just keeps it warm enough to keep your hands warm. But the idea is if you can sort of keep yourself more comfortable by having a warm seat and a warm steering wheel, maybe you can reduce the heat on here, which in turn is just going to save you uh, kilowatt hours of cabin use. So if I have my seat really warm, the steering wheel's warm, I may be able to set this at 71 instead of 73, and that's gonna make a difference, especially over a road trip. So anything you can do there. Another hint for a road trip, wear a sweatshirt. Uh, wear something if you have a, a comfortable jacket that you can wear if you can keep the climate in here um, you know acceptable but not too warm that's really going to help extend your battery life we could do a whole other video on some tips for for making a road trip and what i'm going to wait is just a little bit longer i'll show you guys what the total usage is uh, for my climate control versus um, you know just daily driving and so you can kind of see what that would look like uh, you know, overall, I've been pretty pleased with this system. I, I have, I'm fortunate that I have a heated garage, so I don't use the uh, start feature too often unless I happen to be like at work or somewhere where the vehicle's obviously sitting outside. What I found is if you can keep this vehicle warm and you get in it, like I could leave this at 70 and I could just go and I would be fine. But that day that it was 10 degrees below zero, this thing, the vehicle had been outside for like two days. I let it warm up for 15 minutes and man, I, it was cold. It took a while and what I found is that the floor felt the coldest and, and as I showed you here, um, I always leave the floor setting on. I think what's happening though is that this floor, so like, you know, down here where your feet are, it just got so cold and my hunch is that that battery bank has so much mass to it that it was just that cold. I don't know if there's you know, not quite enough insulation or if there is just so much mass there that you just kind of feel that cold a little bit longer. Uh, again, it was 10 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And that's just, that's pretty cold anyways. In, in Minnesota, we, we sometimes even put a hat on in that weather. <laughs> um, so that could be, if, if you've got a, an EV or especially if you've got a, a Mach-E, let me know if you've noticed that in some really cold weather where the floor just kind of feels really cold if the vehicle has been sitting out. Conversely, if I got this thing in my garage and I go out and it's 10 degrees below zero, I don't notice that. Um, and maybe that's because there's so much mass in the batteries that, uh, you know, now that they're warm, it takes them that much longer to, um, you know, cool back down. This is going to be for another day as well. But if you look up here, so you see where the little charge indicator is? So... It's probably gonna beep at me because I don't have my seatbelt on at the moment. But um, what happens here is when you accelerate, the bar goes up telling you like uh, what your acceleration is, sort of like, or, you know, I think of this as like a zero to a hundred. If you can just see, there's two little tiny dots right there. Think of that like a hard stop. Um, the vehicle won't let you accelerate any more than that. And from what, what I've been experiencing is that's, that's due to um, essentially like letting the batteries sort of acclimate more. So in a really cold temperature, and as you can see, please plug in the vehicle because the outside air temp is low. Um, but as it gets colder, you'll have more and more bars there. I'm getting off topic here a little bit. I'll cover that in another video. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear about that. But anyways, heater system, it absolutely works. That PTC system, it's nice. There's a lot of debate out there in the world with uh, Tesla using um, the heat pump technology and this vehicle using the PTC style heater. Um, I don't really know what's better. Uh, I think they kind of have advantages and disadvantages each way. I'll do some more longer term testing this winter and I will let you guys know what kind of range I'm getting if I really got to have the heat on. Like, am I spending 30% of my total energy on climate? I, I don't know, but I'm going to reset the system here so we can get an accurate count of what's going on. And I promise I will talk about that. If you guys want to hear about that or anything that I didn't cover in this video, 
just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do a video on it. I'm going to try to be up loading videos a little more regularly now so uh, i do read the comments i i don't have a million subscribers so if you guys have something that you want to see i promise i'll see it uh just shout out in the comments below let me know if you've got some questions and it's a short answer i'll just answer them in the comments otherwise if it's something uh maybe a little more in depth we'll just do a whole video on it so anyways hope you guys enjoyed this uh stay well let me know if you've got a mach -E or there's some content you want to see in the future but that's uh, a brief discussion on the PTC heater for the Mach-E GT. Hope you guys are doing well and we will see you on the next video.